All right, guys, I'm getting a lot of questions about the differences between bikes, and I'm going to do a little educational video real quick to show you that um, Can-Am and Polaris really only sell two big bikes. They market them in a lot of different ways, put different crap on them, different fenders, different re ready to relocates, whatever. They're all the same bike. Um, so here on the left, you have the Sportsman 1000. Here on the right, you have the Scrambler 1000. Let's go through a few of the key specs. Um, obviously, the weights are pretty similar. Um, different racks and bumpers, etc. change the weight. The high lifter edition is right here at 974 pounds. It's a lot heavier. And that's heavier than the 850 high lifter because it has racks and a winch and all that. And uh, metal bumpers and all that. But anyways, so some important statistics down here. So let's look at something that really tells you if it's the same frame or not. Um, wheelbase, 53 inches for this the scrambler. It's also 53 inches for the sportsman. That's because it's the exact same frame. Now, overall width can be determined by plastics and all that stuff, so that's really not that helpful of a number. Um, track width isn't that helpful either because companies easily change this by putting wider offset wheels. That's why can like, oh, we have an all-new design Outlander. No, you just put different offset wheels on it. Anyways, same compression ratio, um, same exact towing capacity, uh, 1914, 1914. You think these are all coincidences? No, this is because they are the exact same bike. Um, so let's go down to some more specifications. By the way, these specs are in the manual. Players gives you excellent specs in the user's manual. Um, gearing, low range, 5.03. High range, um, 2.367. Reverse, 4.05. They're all the exact same ratios, even though one is supposed to be utility and one's supposed to be sport, right? So why would they have the same gear ratios? So you're probably thinking, oh, okay, maybe they have better clutching for the scrambler because it's faster. Shift weight, 2470. Shift weight, 2470. It, it's it's the exact same thing. Now, the springs, they do have slightly different springs um, on the drive clutch. Um, and that's because it's a different weight and they want the sportsman to engage a little softer. But, I mean, that's not even really a complete clutch kit, right? It's the same weight, just one spring is different. So, um, pretty much the exact same machine. Um, what's really funny is if you look at some stuff like suspension travel. Now you're like, okay, one of these is like, you know, a race bike, right? It's got better shocks and all this stuff. Front suspension, 9.2. Rear suspension, 10.2. Front suspension, 9.2. Rear suspension, 10.2. I mean, these specs line up perfectly because they are the exact same bike. Um, I don't know how no one knows this. It seems to be some sort of a mystery. But um, the uh, Renegade and that lender are the same machine. And the... Sportsman and the Scrambler are the same machine, except for shocks. Now, the same thing is true with the Can-Ams, right? So here's the Can-Am spec sheets. Um, now, one thing that is different with Can-Am is that they do have a long wheelbase frame and a short wheelbase frame. The short wheelbase frame is used on everything from the Outlander 570L all the way up to my XMR 1000 Renegade. How does that make any sense? Because one of them has twice the power and twice the weight? I have no idea, but that's what they do. It's all the same frame. So, for instance, my XMR in the garage has the exact same wheelbase stock as a 570L, but it's got all this power. So, obviously, it tries to flip over backwards all the time, but whatever. Um, the difference between the Renegade and the Outlander is the same as the Scrambler and the Sportsman. There is no difference. Um, it's, it's the exact same bike. I mean, just, just different shocks and different wheels. You have a little more stance. Um, that's why these bead locks on here are kind of a wide offset. Um, but the same thing. So let's go back to the Polaris stuff. So everyone was saying, okay, you know, you're not making a good comparison because you didn't have a 1,000 Sportsman. If you look at the 850 specs, the 850 uh, makes 78 horsepower. The 1,000 high lifter makes uh, 85 horsepower. Torque, you guys keep talking about torque. Torque's pretty irrelevant with a CVT transmission because if the CVT is tuned properly, it holds the engine at its max horsepower RPM and takes the most advantage of gearing to make the most torque. So therefore, torque with a CVT is not a very relative number. Um, 78 horsepower, 85 horsepower. The 850 high lifter is much lighter because no winch, um, no racks and all that stuff. Um, so they end up having the exact same power to weight ratio. So one's not going to be faster than the other. Additionally, I had a tuner and a pipe, which makes more than you know a 6-7 horsepower difference on these machines. So my bike was actually more powerful than a high lifter 1000 and lighter. Um, clutching. Um, they had the same clutching pretty much and my bike was clutched anyways. It had a, had the spring swap in there uh, the spring swap to help him hit harder 
most XMRs and um, high traditions are actually clutched less aggressively than their other counterparts because they don't want you to break things uh, because they know that giving you a heavy, hard-hitting spring is a great way to, to break axles and destroy the transmission, so they give you a softer engagement. Um, suspension travel, um, the high lifter has terrible travel, which is why I swap scrambler shocks onto my high lifter. The reason that works is because it's all the exact same machine. So with Can-Am to figure all this stuff out, um, it's not as easy as just looking through the manual because um, Can-Am doesn't release very good specs. These specs are mostly made up and they're not very complete. Um, but what you can do is go on like a microfish like this, like a Partzilla for instance, and you can look at every single component, every single part number, and you could compare them to different bikes and you can figure out, you know, hey, what's actually different about this bike versus this one? Now, um, Can-Am does give you um, a pretty big improvement if you get an XMR 1000. All the other XMRs are a joke. The XMR 1000 does get lower gears, actually gets a totally different transmission. It has the 6x6 training, which means it's got like a 30% reduction and can actually spin some tires. But all the other Can-Ams have this transmission. And you can go in here and you can look at this part number, right? So 34, let's see, 34 um, is the shift gear 20 teeth. And you can click on the part number right here and you can see all the other bikes it fits. Um, it's usually isn't a complete list, but you can see that this gear is used in a lot of different machines. And this is supposed to be an XMR, but this gear is used in everything else. Now, you probably wonder, why do they use the same gear in all these different machines? Well, that's because all Can-Ams are the same machine. They're all geared exactly the same. That's why a, um, an 850 high lifter is a joke. Or not, excuse me, 850 XMR is a joke because it has the exact same gearing as a 570L. Which is why I tell you people all the time, oh, you cannot spin big tires with anything but a Can-Am XMR 1000 without full clutching. And that's because they're, they're geared too high. You have the same transmission as the trail bike. Um, and that's why Can-Am gives you tires that purposely run short. Um, these cryptids they put on here measure like a 28. Their old Silverbacks measure like a 28.5. Can-Am finds the shortest, shittiest tires and puts it on their XMRs because they know it's all it can turn. Um, the 1000s can turn more, obviously, but they still put the same shitty little tiny tires on them. But anyways, so my point is, uh, before you make statements about, oh, this is, doesn't make sense because you didn't test the right bike, you should probably do some research and know what you're talking about. All the information is on the internet. You don't have to have someone tell it to you. You can actually go research things and figure stuff out on your own. Believe it or not, that is a thing you can do. Um, but I get most of my information from Partzilla and the factory manuals. I don't trust forums. I don't just you know watch some YouTube video and let someone tell me how to do it. You actually go out and find the information. That way you know what you're talking about. Um, all the information's out there. You just gotta put a little time into it and you can learn some pretty neat stuff about these bikes. But what's really, what I've noticed is that Can-Am pretty much sells two bikes. Um, now you could say Honda does the same thing, right? The Rancher 420 is almost the exact same thing as Rubicon 500, but Honda does give you some pretty serious upgrades. Rubicon has a front locker, independent rear suspension, better seat, which is huge. Stuff like that. Um, but all companies kind of do this to save money, but Polaris and Can-Am take it to a new level. They just dress up the same frame a lot of different ways and charge drastically different prices for the same thing.